When it comes to insulating basement walls, there's a lot of confusion about where the insulation goes and what type of insulation should be used, and the building code doesn't exactly provide the guidance to avoid moisture issues like condensation. In this video, we're going to discuss basement insulation based on the most recent International Residential Code, some of its major blind spots, and how to insulate your basement walls safely so that you won't have to worry about any future moisture problems. Let's get into it. So, basement walls are generally formed out of cast-in-place or precast concrete, or grouted concrete block. These are all forms of mass walls, and generally speaking, mass walls have the ability to absorb and store a lot more heat compared to framed wall assemblies. Now, it actually takes a lot of heat to raise the temperature of a mass wall, so they have a tendency to stay relatively cold, especially when they're located below grade like in a basement. Now, because our basement walls are generally cold, this has a pretty big impact on how we want to insulate our basement walls to prevent condensation. We don't want warm, humid air from the interior coming into contact with that cold basement wall. Otherwise, condensation can form on that wall, both within the pores of the concrete, called capillary condensation, and also on the surface. Now, let's take a look at the code first, because this is where we can actually run into some trouble if we just follow the code blindly. This is table R402.1.3 in the 2024 IECC, which has been adopted by the 2024 IRC. By the time that you're watching this video, your state may or may not have adopted these requirements, or they've been adopted with amendments, so just keep that in mind. But if we take a look at the required basement wall R value, we see that in climate zones 0, 1, and 2, your basement walls aren't even required to be insulated, but they do have to have a maximum U factor that they have to meet. This is just the inverse of R value, and that's U.36. So basically, if you construct your basement walls out of concrete, it'll meet this requirement. We actually get a lot of cooling benefits from having that wall thermally coupled to the ground. However, as we get into climate zones 3 through 8, we see that there are clear R-value requirements that have to be met in order to meet code. Now, this is where we can run into some problems. If you look at these numbers, you'll see that there are two or three figures that are thrown out. For example, if we go over to climate zone 5, we see a requirement for either R15CI, that means R15 continuous insulation, we'll talk about that in a second, R19 cavity insulation, or a combination of R13 cavity insulation plus R5 continuous insulation. And we see the same figures used for climate zones 6, 7, and 8. Now these figures can be a little bit misleading. Continuous insulation, as defined by the IRC and IBC, is an insulating material that's continuous across all structural members without thermal bridges other than fasteners and service openings. It's installed on the interior or exterior, or is integral to any opaque surface of the building envelope. The problem with this definition is that the code allows for that continuous insulation layer to be located anywhere within that assembly, but it doesn't account for air permeability or vapor permeability of this continuous insulation. Now, if we installed this continuous insulation layer on the outside of the basement wall assembly, air permeability and vapor permeability would not matter. We essentially have a perfect wall where the structure is kept at interior conditions, the water and air control layer is on the outside in the form of the waterproofing, and it's not thermally isolated. However, let's say we pushed that continuous insulation layer to the interior side. Now that concrete wall no longer is thermally coupled to the interior. It's cold and remains relatively cold throughout the year. If we use a vapor permeable and air permeable continuous insulation product like rock wool on the interior of that basement wall, what's going to happen? That warm, moisture-laden air from the interior is just going to pass right through the rock wool and condense on the backside of the cold concrete. Again, this wall assembly satisfies the code requirement, but it would likely cause problems unless you were operating at very low interior relative humidities. But this isn't just a wintertime problem, it's also a summertime problem. In the Northeast United States, basements are extremely common and people hang out in their basements when it's hot outside. They also have a tendency to open their windows and doors, letting in all that warm, humid air. If our basement walls are around 55 degrees Fahrenheit to 60 degrees, and the air outside is 85 degrees at 65% relative humidity, our dew point temperatures are going to be around 71 to 72 degrees Fahrenheit. Now again, this is first going to appear as capillary condensation, and then you'll start to see it beating off the surface of that concrete, but we are basically increasing the moisture content of that concrete if we don't stop warm, moisture-laden air from the interior from coming into contact with that surface. If we locate our continuous insulation on the interior side, we want to use something like a taped rigid foam board in order to provide the benefits of an air control layer and a vapor control layer. They also have a new rock wool product with a smart vapor retarder membrane bonded to it, which satisfies the same thing. 
If you're looking for a complete guide on how to build a dry, comfortable, and durable basement, get my guide to basement design only available at asiri-designs.com shop. In this guide, we discuss everything from waterproofing and drainage techniques, insulating, condensation control, egress wells, HVAC considerations, and more. Links will be in the description below. The code also allows for only cavity insulation to be used, which is more or less the same problem. If we insulate with an R19 bat, whether it's fiberglass or rock wool, or perhaps something like a dense pack cellulose, you'll run into those same condensation problems because warm, moist air can still diffuse or leak into that cavity space and come into contact with the cold concrete. This is really irresponsible of the code to allow for this, especially as we get into the colder climates like zones 5, 6, 7, and 8, and I'd say especially in zones 6, 7, and 8 where the frost depth can actually be quite deep and where the exposed portions of the foundation are thermally conductive, that concrete is going to be ice cold throughout the winter months. Well, can't we just use a vapor barrier in this case? The answer is no, unless it's something like a smart vapor retarder. The reason being is that a polyethylene vapor barrier actually has a higher chance of trapping moisture in that wall, resulting in mold growth and deterioration of that framing. We actually have a whole video on this exact topic, which you can go and watch up here, but the 2024 IRC also recognizes this and prohibits the use of class 1 vapor retarders on the interior side of framed walls in basement assemblies for the purpose of an air barrier. It's air leakage into that cavity space that we really have to worry about, since air has the ability to transport moisture at rates that are orders of magnitude higher than simple diffusion. So what are we saying here? If you're going to insulate your basement, either insulate it completely on the outside with continuous insulation, preferably something like rigid rock wool so bugs don't burrow into it, or if you do use rigid foam, make sure it's covered and protected, or if you decide to insulate from the interior side for perhaps long-term durability benefits, you need to make sure that continuous insulation layer is airtight and a vapor retarder like taped rigid foam board, closed cell spray foam, which we've been avoiding but it still works, or some fibrous insulation material with an airtight smart vapor retarder which will prevent condensation but allow for drying back to the interior if this stuff gets wet. Now in board of that continuous insulation, we want the framed cavity on the interior side of that basement wall to either be uninsulated or insulated with a vapor permeable insulation to allow for drying. We want our moisture sensitive components to be able to dry out. If you found this video helpful, make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more weekly building science videos and pick up a copy of our design guide to dry and comfortable basements, only available at asiri-designs.com shop. We also have over 150 free building science articles that cover a wide range of topics. Links will be in the description below. For now, good luck with your projects. Cheers.